I love discovering new artists to follow because they constantly remind me how much is possible with this free tool we all have access to. It is also one of the best ways to uncover artists who are actively contributing code to Blender's development. People like Jacques Luck, who is currently working on a new text animation feature planned for Blender 5.1. More on that later. For now, let's take a look at some of the standout work produced this week by artists from around the world. You've watched Godzilla, King of the Monsters, Godzilla vs. Kong, and Godzilla Minus One. Now let me introduce you to Glockzilla. He's done using his fists. He's upgraded to a Glock. He's tired of everyone messing with him, and this time, he means business. This amazing piece was created by Content Disaster and posted on Reddit. It's a comedic take on the franchise, and honestly, I hope it gets turned into a full movie. The level of detail in the simulations, the scale, the motion, Everything about this Godzilla feels like it was built for the big screen. Even as a joke, the craftsmanship is seriously impressive. Next up, we have this trippy scene by Lokendens, and it looks so convincingly real that if it hadn't been posted in the Blender subreddit, I'd honestly be googling to figure out which movie it was pulled from. The POV framing works perfectly, the handheld camera movement sells the realism, and that subtle 90s era camera look is the cherry on top. It's one of those pieces where every creative choice feels intentional, and the execution is solid from start to finish. Next up, we have a render from Cartesian Caramel. The post mentions that it was made using geometry nodes, but honestly, I find myself trying to spot exactly where they come into play. My best guess is the smeared painterly effect on the tail of the car. I imagine the paint breakup is driven by some kind of animated noise shader, with the color transitions handled in a similar procedural way. I would genuinely love to dig into the project files and see how it's all put together. That curiosity aside, it's an outstanding render. Stylish, confident, and very well executed overall. Next is an effect I've always wanted to make but could never quite crack, the Harry Potter style teleportation effect. It's easily one of the best effects in its category, truly unique and instantly recognizable. CG Matter recreated it and went a step further by breaking it down in a full step-by-step -step tutorial showing exactly how to achieve it. The setup leans heavily on math, distortion, gradients, and a few clever tricks that really come together in the end. If you're not following this guy, you're missing out on a lot. Almost every week, he's releasing something genuinely impressive on his channel, so this is one of those creators that absolutely deserves a permanent spot in your feed. Like I said, every week CG Matter has something new. While scrolling, I came across another Geometry Nodes experiment, this time a bowl of spaghetti. And let's be honest, Blender doesn't really have anything built in that can do this properly. The closest would be curve simulations using the cloth system, but that falls apart quickly since it doesn't support self-collisions, so, so the spaghetti would never pile up the way it does here. This is a great demonstration of how Geometry Nodes already has all the fundamental pieces needed to build almost anything you can imagine. The problem is that there are too many pieces, and stitching them together is still overly complex and time-consuming. If the Blender team could dedicate even a single year to consolidating and turning these building blocks into higher-level tools, instead of adding more nodes, that would be a massive step forward. Going back to Blender development, we can now expect native text animation support in Blender 5.1, thanks to Jacques Luck. From what has been shown so far, it looks like it will work similarly to text animation in After Effects, allowing animations per character with presets and higher level controls. These are exactly the kinds of tools that can turn geometry nodes into a real powerhouse. They let users who aren't comfortable with node-based workflows interact with complex systems in a much more approachable way, making them accessible even to Blender beginners. We can already see another use case for text animation from Dar Dergio Zentriker, although this example is far more complex. It's built completely from the ground up, node by node, and really highlights how deep your geometry nodes knowledge needs to be today to pull something like this off. Uh, that's why tools like the one Jack is working on are so important. They're what will move geometry nodes away from feeling like rocket science and closer to something that's genuinely artist friendly. When Blender developers are tied up with bug fixes and core upgrades, the add-on community usually steps in to fill the gaps. In this post by 3D Vision, we get a glimpse of World Conceptor, a new add-on aimed at building large-scale landscapes covering clouds, atmosphere, terrain, mist, and more. 
In this example, geometry nodes are used to generate different cloud types, with animation layered on top to create a convincing time-lapse effect. Uh, it's a solid reminder of how much innovation is happening outside core Blender development, and how add-ons continue to push Blender forward in practical, artist-focused ways. I'm also closely following the development of Infinity Fracture by Miatinen, and as someone who loves RBD simulations, this is genuinely exciting. This level of detail and control is something Blender has never really been known for, and seeing it achieved entirely with geometry nodes is kind of mind-blowing. The fracture quality, the layering of detail, and the overall control put it in a category Blender simply couldn't compete in before. What makes it even more compelling is the ability to export the results to tools like Embergen and other applications to add secondary effects such as smoke and dust. That kind of interoperability is exactly what Blender has been missing in high-end destruction workflows. If this continues to mature, it could realistically bring back hundreds of game developers who move to Houdini specifically for this type of destruction work. This is what happens when you make your software open source. It turns into something completely different from what you originally imagined. Here, Mr. Anderson is using what I'm guessing is a mix of the Blender Python API and geometry nodes to create talking cartoons, bananas, and basically anything with a face driven entirely by a live camera feed. Just Blender and a webcam, and it works ridiculously well. What's wild is how natural the results feel. At this point, I genuinely think a lot of people would choose this workflow over traditional keyframe animation. It's faster, more intuitive, and far more playful while still being powerful enough for serious use. This is exactly the kind of unexpected innovation that open source software enables, things no roadmap could ever fully plan for. Geometry Nodes is now basically the solution to almost every problem in Blender. If your computer struggles with smoke simulations, just use Geometry Nodes, exactly like Kagero did here. It looks like the emitter is spawning some form of sprites with pre-made fire animations, and if you look closely, you can actually spot the looped animation playing across different flames. That said, there's so much randomization and layering happening, timing offsets, variation, secondary motion, that you'd never notice the loops unless you were actively looking for them. It's a great example of how geometry nodes can be used to fake traditionally expensive effects in a way that's efficient, controllable, and visually convincing, especially when you know how to hide the tricks behind smart variation. I don't just highlight what others are doing, sometimes I dive in myself. This is a tutorial I made, uh, breaking down how to create this energy cube in Blender using a combination of different effects. The goal was to dissect each effect individually and show how they come together, and I'm confident you'll pick up a few useful techniques along the way. If you want to go deeper into geometry nodes in a more structured um, and guided way, check out my Master Geometry Nodes course. Thanks for watching, and if you want to follow the artists featured here, all the links are in the description.